So just a quick one here, it's an area I've touched on before, obviously the benefits of resistance training, but this time the study was done in the elderly population and looking at the benefits overriding that existed when doing resistance training. Now, uh, what they found is basically that it reduced falls, it improved mobility, it increased bone density, it increased lifespan, so the chance of early uh, premature death was reduced, uh, it produced uh, increased muscle mass and strength, it reduced disability, it reduced illness, um, and almost as many things as you could actually find it pretty much was effective for which is quite remarkable considering it's one form of exercise and for a long time people would talk about uh, cardiovascular exercise being the go-to exercise if you want to reduce you know premature death and be fitter and healthier and live a longer life but what's interesting is and this is obviously an extrapolation of why this is effective is that if someone needs to um, prevent themselves from getting pneumonia, uh, which comes usually from the back end of a chest infection that you couldn't clear, being more active and mobile is going to aid the, the complete clearance of, of, of mucus and rubbish out of your chest so you don't get infections as easily and freely. And that sounds like that isn't resistance training. You're right, it's not. But what it is, is that strength is what resistance training gives you. Now, if you can't get out of a chair, you can't walk around and be active. And getting out of a chair is a one-off event that you do once, not multiple times. That's a strength issue. And I've worked in hospitals where I used to work on wards where we'd help patients to get up and around. And what we would find is, is that if you get them on the feet, they can walk around. Bear in mind, they're using walking aids a lot of the time that assist them to walk around. Where their problems lie is getting out of a chair. Other problems are getting up and down the stairs. So they may live in a bungalow, but all their family members and friends or whatever may not. And therefore they can't visit because they may only have an upstairs toilet. And this means they can't visit them because they can't get up the stairs. So strength of getting up the stairs is not there. So they can't go in, out and about. So they're less active there. Other things is like um, getting out, out and about, i.e. going to the shops and stuff like that. You need to get in and out of a car. And in and out of a car is quite strenuous. It's more of a strength issue for an elderly person than an endurance issue. So if you can't get in and out of a car, then you're not going to necessarily go to the shops or you're not going to go anywhere particular. So having strength um, from resistance training is going to aid all these processes. Obviously, another one is bone density. Falling over, if I fell over now, chance of me breaking something is pretty, pretty low. If a, an 80-year-old, 90-year-old fell over, the chance of breaking something is pretty high. Um, and that's going to have mobility consequences, which are then going to inflict the ability of dying early. So being stronger in the bones is also useful, and that's what resistance training will do as well. So basically, another study highlighting the benefits of resistance training in multiple areas, much more than people would realize. So what this shows you is that the older you get, the more reason to do resistance training, not less, that you need. So get out there and start working it. Like I say, you've got to progress slowly and you need to get the right advice, but it is certainly the way to go. So anyway, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.